So grades 10, 11, and 12, give us a call on that number. That's 0800 And give us a call and ask us some of the questions that you're battling with. Uh, tonight's focus is going to be on chemical equilibrium and factors which affect that. So Le Chatelier's principle, any uh, questions related to that, like um, KC calculations or your equilibrium constant. What's going to happen is we're going to take a look at a reaction which is going to go both ways and see if we can affect one way more than the other. And we're going to see if we can't introduce some maths into that and to try to see if we can't understand it a little bit better. Okay, right, I've chosen a very, very representative sort of reaction which is commonly used in type, um, type of equilibrium questions. And what's going to happen is we're going to look at this reaction and we're going to see how we can affect this reaction. I've got cobalt chloride, right, which is a nice blue color. Right, and what's going to happen, if it comes into contact with a little bit of water, it is capable of going to a hydrated form of cobalt chloride. Now that is a pink color. The reason that I've chosen this reaction is that there's a nice visual indication whether or not the reaction has gone favoring the pink side or favoring the blue side. And we're going to see exactly what happens. And I'm also going to demonstrate that exactly both of them can happen at the same time and that we can reverse what we do. Okay, so there's a few factors which we can factor into what's going on here. I've got a blue solution of cobalt chloride and it's not in water. Why? Because water can react with it. Okay, so water is one of the factors which we can consider while doing this reaction. Right, one of the other factors is the chloride ion, which once I add water, dissociates or comes off the cobalt ion and becomes hydrated. That's why there's all that water there. There's six waters surrounding the cobalt. Okay, so we're going to see if we can't influence it from being this nice blue color, right, hydrating it with some water and trying to see if we can't get the reaction to come back. All right, so there's a few factors which come into play. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a test tube, we're going to put in some of our cobalt chloride, right, that's a nice blue color, right, and we're going to try to see if we can't influence that blue color and see what that means. Okay, we're going to start off with a fair amount. Okay, so I hope you can see this nice blue color, right, and uh, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to see if we can't influence this blue color. So, right, one of those reactants on the board which I was wanting to show you, one of those reactants is H2O, water, and I've got exactly that inside here. So what I want you to do is to watch the blue test tube and see what happens when I add a few drops of water. So I'm going to add it dropwise because the change is quite sudden. You should see the blue color. Sorry. You should see exactly what's happening when I add a little bit of water. What you should notice is we've got a slightly purple color, which is a mixture of pink and, pink and blue. I'll explain that a little bit further. I hope you notice that the color is changing slightly. Okay, right, we've almost gone to a completely pink color. Right, so what's happening is we've got this purple color which is somewhere in between pink and blue. Right, and if I add a lot more water, we've got a completely pink solution. Okay, so we've shown that water can push the reaction in one direction. I'm going to leave that there. So we started blue and we ended off pink. How did we do this? We added some water. Okay. Right, let's look on our board, let's look at the reaction, let's try and understand exactly why we went from blue to pink and see how that means that we've got a reaction which is reversible. We need to be able to prove it by doing it both ways, so I'm going to do that with you in a minute. So we took a blue solution, we added some H2O, the solution became pink. Right, so this meant that water was favoring the reaction which went from left to right, which is called my forward reaction. Okay, so I can have that reaction which is favored, and that is called my forward reaction. How did I favor it? I added some H2O or water and we saw it going pink. So we've got evidence that it turned from the blue color into the pink color. So let's try to see if we can't influence it to undergo a reverse reaction. Let's see if we can't get it to go from pink back to blue. So what do we need to add? From blue to pink, we needed to add H2O. Right, so from pink to blue, what are we going to have to add? We're going to add some Cl minus. Unfortunately, I can't go into the shop and buy some Cl minus in a bottle. I have to buy it in the form of a salt or in the form of hydrochloric acid. What I've chosen 
is a form of Cl- which doesn't have any water, but does dissolve very nicely. So what's going to happen is we're going to use the reverse reaction by adding calcium chloride. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to take the Cl- and add it in the form of a salt, which will dissolve, adding Cl- to the solution. Okay, so what's inside? Right, so I've got a little bit of this calcium chloride, and this calcium chloride is inside here, and this is our source of Cl-. So what we're hoping to do is to add a little bit of this and see exactly what we can do by adding a small amount to this. So I'm going to add a small amount, and I want you to watch what happens to the color if we add a small amount. What you should notice is that there's a blue color covering the salt, and it will get stronger and stronger as we go. So you can see that there's both present. I've got the blue color at the bottom, and I've got the red color at the top. So what should happen is, as I gradually mix this in, as I get more calcium chloride mixing in there, we get a stronger and stronger blue color. Right, so I'm going to leave that for a little bit and try to explain what's going on as the calcium chloride dissolves. Right, so we can go forward and we can go reverse. So the forward reaction was identified by a pink color forming, the reverse by a blue color forming. How did we influence it to go forward? We added H2O. How did I influence the reverse? I added Cl- in the form of calcium chloride. So let's just formalize what was going on there. So we say that the H2O, what was my result? It went blue to pink. So my reaction changed from blue to pink. So what can we say? It favored the formation of the pink product, and that was the forward reaction. Now, I don't want you to go and think that the reverse reaction has stopped. What we've done is we've favored both. Now, in this test tube, we can see that both are occurring. It's gradually changing back into a blue color. Right, what you can see is that both reactions are happening. This is a mixture of pink and blue, so both can occur. And if I let this go for a little while, and I've got my calcium chloride, which is slowly dissolving in there, what's going to happen is it's going to change back into a blue color. Right, so how do I get that to happen? So I can do my reverse. So as opposed to H2O, I can say I added calcium chloride, that's CaCl2. What happened? I went from pink to blue. Okay, what did that prove? It favored the reverse reaction. Doesn't mean that the forward reaction had stopped. Neither ever stops. We can see evidence for this, that it's somewhere in between the pink and the blue. And what's going to happen is tonight we're going to explain exactly how you can predict which one it's going to favor. And what's going to happen as well, we're going to introduce some calculations, some KC calculations a little bit later on in the program. We're going to try to explain exactly what's going on inside this test tube. Why we went from blue to pink and now back to somewhere in between with a purple color. So completely reversible reaction means that we've got a forward and a reverse reaction happening at the same time.